Praise the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to be back in the house tonight? I am truly glad to know that it is Wednesday. It is halfway through another week, and we've all gathered back together in the house of the Lord. And what an honor it is to be back. We're going to have them put the prayer request up. We're going to start this service with prayer. I know we have many needs in the house tonight, but we want to make a, a mention of a few. Let's continue to remember the Markles, Sister Haley, Sister Bragg's family and their time of loss. Sister Geneva Moss, Doug Mullins, Sister Rogers, Brother Khan's dad, Claire Windsor, and the Wagner family, and Sister Lillian Sanders. Uh, I believe she's got pneumonia, so we need to remember her as well. Um, if you would, let's stand. We'll take these knees to the Lord. If you have a need, lift it to him. He's here to meet it. If you'll give it to him, you can't meet it if you're holding on to it. But if you'll give it to him, he'll move in it. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you tonight thanking you for gathering us here again and again, oh God. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do in this place tonight, Lord. Lord, we know that you and you alone are beautiful for every situation brought to you tonight, oh God. Lord, we ask that you move. Lord, let your peace be felt in every situation. Lord, let your healing touch flow. God, move in ways that only you can, oh God. Lord, we ask that your presence just overtake us, God. Lord, we ask that whatever the need may be, God, that you reach down tonight, God, in that hospital room, Lord, that home, God, wherever that need may be, God, move tonight. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do in this place tonight, and we ask that you just let your sweet presence fall in your sweet name, in that only name of Jesus. Amen. Brother Haley is coming, and he's going to sing for us tonight. He's going to sing a congregational for us. Y'all worship with him tonight as he sings. Praise the Lord, church. Ever since Sunday night, and I'm going to brag a little, my wife has done more in the past three days than you have in the past four months, and I give God glory for it. <laughs> and then I wanted to apologize to the crews upstairs. Last Wednesday, if you remember, we sung a song, and I never did bring it up on the screen. I forgot to tell them. So I apologize to them. Y'all help me. Well, as I journey through this land, sinking as I go, I'm born to souls to Calvary. To the
Sister Amber is going to be coming to sing for us. I love that line, cares all pass, home at last. I'm telling you, I can't wait to be carefree and to be home because I'm just passing through. Y'all worship with Sister Amber. Ted's going to be making their way. I'm telling you, I love that song. And I think as a little kid, I was always taught, you're not living until you're living for the Lord. And I think so many times, so many struggles will hit you. But you just remember, that load's a little lighter and my day's a little brighter because I just started to live and there's no greater life than living for the Lord. Y'all worship with them as they sing.
As the worship team is making their way, I'm telling you, it's nice to know that this world is not my home. We've sung a lot about living for the Lord in heaven, but I'm telling you, that message never gets old, Brother Hodum. I love to hear it. It's, it's great to know that no matter what road this world heads down, and it's headed down one if something don't change, but no matter which way it heads, we've got salvation, and we've got a way to get out of it. I'm telling you, I don't want to be left here. I want to go where the Lord's got prepared for me. I want to go and take part in that. Y'all worship with the worship team.
can be seated if you'd like. Aren't you thankful you're free from the world of sin? If you could just look around at the condition of some of the people that's in the world today and realize, uh, you know, it's they really don't want to be there. Uh, they just don't know no other way. They don't have no uh, no no hope for a better tomorrow. No hope for a brighter path. They. Uh, they really don't want to be enslaved to sin, but they just hadn't figured out the, the escape route. And you, sitting here tonight, have understood that God's grace is great and his mercy endure forever. And he is the way to freedom. Amen. He is, his word will set you free. All right. Amen. The truth is the way to true freedom. And to know that and, and is... We should take not take it for granted, but we should appreciate it more than we ever have. So good to see you in church tonight, every one of you. And I will say this, uh, it is uh, with uh, heavy hearts that we announce the passing of Sister Bragg. Uh, probably most of you are already aware of that, but uh, Sister Bragg uh, passed this morning, early in the early hours of this morning. And uh, pleasant lady, one of the most pleasant ladies I've ever known. One of the sweetest ladies I've ever been around, and I am going to miss her. Uh, I, in fact, I was sharing with her children this morning. I, I've been around church all my life, and I've watched people that uh, shouted, and some of them juked and jived, and some of them slung hairpins, and some of them uh, looked like they was turning cartwheels almost. I did see a man turn flips across from the church one day. I've seen a lot of things happen in my 42 years in Pentecostal church but I've never in my life experienced anybody that just looked like they floated like Sister Bragg did and when she would step out in the aisle and begin to worship it was a beautiful sight and so uh, it's such a, a precious sight to watch her worship and praise God and such a pleasant lady to be around and I she's going to be missed obviously but she's 92 years old and she's lived her life the majority of her life for this moment. Amen. She has lived and, and give her life. And uh, if there was ever an example, she has been an example for us to follow. And I'm thankful for her and her dedication and her walk with God. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. I will say that the visitation will be tomorrow night from 5 until 8. 5 o'clock tomorrow evening to 8 o'clock at uh, Memorial Funeral Home. Uh, that's downtown, just a couple blocks up from the courthouse on Bunch Street uh, from 5 to 8. The funeral will be Friday at 11, uh, Friday morning at 11 a.m. And we, will, we are planning on feeding the family after the funeral on Friday. Uh, if you can help out in any way on that, uh, text me, call me, see me after church. Let me know uh, because we will feed that family Friday after the funeral. Uh, I hope that you're able to get by and show your respect uh, to this family and this great lady of our church and great uh, lady of, in, of God. And I, uh, that will be the visitations 5 to 8 tomorrow, funeral Saturday, I mean Friday at 11. Uh, also, Saturday we're having our cleanup day. And uh, it will start here around here about 9 o'clock. Some of you has already come and done some work. There's a list on the table in the foyer. Uh, if you're able to be here Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, come and work. Let's get some things accomplished and make this place look nice and fresh and smell good and look good and all the all that we can do to make it uh, ready for homecoming. Uh, but for our Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. Also, the youth are planning on going to Decaturville Pentecostal Church on Friday night. They're leaving here at 6 o'clock. If you want to go to that church service there, Brother Sammy Sherrill will be preaching at Decaturville Pentecostal Church. Uh, they'll be leaving and taking the van 6 o'clock from here at the church uh, to uh, Decaturville. It's, uh, then on Saturday, they're planning on leaving at 3 o'clock and going to Sugar Lock. Service there it starts at 6. Brother Jason Piercy will be preaching. And if you want to go to that, it's a long ways down there, but it's okay. Uh, they, if you want to go, the van will be leaving here on Saturday at 3 o'clock. Also, Brother Dixon is having a service on Friday night. Just This is our neighbor down the road, just a couple of miles. He's having a service on Friday night. This is to honor Brother Merle Dixon, who is retiring as their pastor. And it will start at 7 on, fr on Saturday night. They're having a service to install Brother Tim Dixon to be as their pastor. 
and it will start at 6, and you're invited to go and be a part of that as well. And then, of course, for the bishops having service in New Albany on Friday and Saturday night, Brother Raymond Woodward, Canada, and if you've ever heard him preach, you would love to be there. I would love to be able to go. I probably won't be able to make it to that, but uh, he's a great preacher, great, great preacher and leader, and uh, you're welcome to go that as well. Tonight, we're going to ask our ushers to come forward. We're going to receive our missions offering, and thank you for giving. Thank you for giving. If you want to give online, you're welcome to give online. Please stay in prayer for the Bragg family. Please hold them up in prayer. And remember those arrangements. And any of you that can help with food, just let me know. And we'll get that taken care of for Friday as soon as the funeral is over with. Stand to your feet one more time. Our ushers are going to pass by. Once they get past you, kids don't leave until they get past you. But once they get past you, you can be dismissed to go to class. Go ahead, gentlemen. <laughs> understand one thing that God is God he is the source of everything it's hard sometimes for us not to rely on our own abilities and rely on our own strengths and rely on our own talents and rely on our own selves because we're independent and I'm glad that we're independent people but I want you to know one thing God's still going to be God and if you put him as the center of your life everything else will work if you try it on your own it won't work Amen. He's, Jesus was telling his disciples, and this was right before he was about to be crucified, and he was giving them like a one final lesson. And he was making sure that they could understand, you're not going to be able to do this on your own. We could understand that tonight. We, if, if we can remember one thing from this service, you need to know, you can't make it on your own. You can't make it on your own. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the husband. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. It's pretty serious. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth much or bring forth more fruit. Understand, there is times for all of us, and, and again, once we are uh, child of God, born again, living for God. Um, we got to realize it's going to be through Him. But even there's coming trials and hardships that come about to shake us and shape us and make us more fruitful. Um, it's not it's not just an easy road after you get born again. That's a good start. You can't make it without it. But you need to understand that every hardship that comes along is not the devil trying to trip you up. He will. The devil will come and try to trip you up. The devil will try to make you stumble and fall. And he'll laugh at your calamities. And he'll scorn at you and make fun of you. But also you know this, that sometimes the, the, the vine has to train, tr just trim us up. 
It'll get pruning. Amen. Correct us. It's okay when you go through that so that you can bear forth or bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, verse 3. Again, the word of God may get on our toes and I hadn't got into my real lesson yet, but I wanna, I'm, I'm pausing here. The word of God may get on our toes. It's okay. Amen. It's okay. None of us, is, as I've said it just in the last few services, none of us has heard him say well done yet. And until we have heard him say well done, I need to know that the word of God still is applied to my life. So when the preacher preaches and it gets on me, I don't need to get upset about it. I just need to change. Amen. I need to change. I don't need to be bothered by the word of God that gets on me. When conviction connects to my life, when conviction connects to me, it gives me assurance that, hey, I have not went too far. I, I, had, I had a young person, and I won't very, they were in early 20s, and sat in my office, and, and they began to explain to me why they were justified in doing some horrific, terrible acts of life. And they justified all their actions, and they felt no remorse, and they felt no guilt in the things that they'd done. And I'll just be honest with you, all I could think of was, they've seared their conscience with a hot iron. They have went beyond where their convictions are. That's scary. Scary. Wrong's wrong, whether you justify it or not. Sin's going to be sin. It doesn't matter whether you can okay it in yourself or not. Amen. And just because you think you can justify it, if it goes against the word of God, it's still sin. Amen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how, what kind of excuse you've got. Amen. There's not going to be any, any excuses except lame excuses come the day of judgment. There's nothing, there is no reason that you're going to be able to escape from doing what the Word of God says. Amen. And that's for all of us. We are going to be measured by His Word. And we are clean through the Word. That's the reason you hear me talk about it. David said it. And again, I know I, I need to keep going, but let me pause here for just a minute. David said it. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. I need the word of God to cleanse me, but I need it to lead me. I, if I follow after my own self, I'll find myself in a miserable state. Amen. I, if, I, if I follow after my own uh, fleshly desires, I won't serve God. You won't either. Amen. But I got to have the word, and I got to take the word and let it be applied to where I'm at. It's not just good enough for me to hear the word. If I'm not a doer of the word, it's not done me any good to hear it if I hadn't applied it. Amen. I, I read something, or uh, I think I read it. I don't know. I may have heard it the other day. I don't remember. I think I was reading this, and it said that, oh, I take that back. I heard a preacher say this the other day. And uh, he said, you know, he said, I've pastored for many years, and I've pastored many generations. And he said, Used to, I'd get up and I'd preach and he said, I would preach the word of God and, and people just took what I preached and they went and done it. He said, then the baby boomers come. And he said, and I preached the word of God and he said, they ask questions, why, why? And he said, you had to back it up constantly. But then they would go ahead and go do it. He said, then we got this generation that comes now and he said, I stand at the door and I preach the same word of God and they shake my hand and say, I enjoy that and just keep on doing what they've always been doing. He said, they don't think it applies to them. He said, this generation does not believe that the word of God really applies to them. They want to hear it. They pat me on the back for preaching it, but then they just keep on doing the same old thing. Folks, I'm going to tell you, it won't work. The word of God's what cleanses us. And when I hear the word of God and I don't obey it, then I might as well have not heard the word of God. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
Your faith in God's what's gonna get you to heaven. And again, I don't wanna jump ahead of myself tonight, but I want you to understand, if I don't have my faith in God, then I'm not gonna have, and how am I gonna do that? By hearing the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. I believe it takes every word from Genesis to Revelation if I'm gonna hear him say, well done. Amen. And I'll even go further than that. I can't depend on getting it all when I'm at church because we're only at church and you can only hear about an hour and 15 to 30 minutes. It's according on how long winded I get in it. But an hour and a half, two hours at the most preaching a week if this is all you get. I'd hate to know that I was going to give an account off of that. You like to get a paycheck for two hours of work? Don't amount to much, does it? It really don't. If you're going to expect to walk on those streets of gold, and again, I, I won't get into that. I, I, I don't take all that literal. But if you're going to hear him say, well done, you better put in more than two hours worth of work. You better get the whole word of God. Get it rooted and grounded in your life because we're going to give account by the word of God. If we're not cleansed by it, we're not going to be clean. Amen. Jesus was saying here, he said, abide in me. I'm getting really down to where I want it to start. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Abide in me, and I in you. A lot of words there. Short phrase, but there's a lot to it. Abiding in him is more than attending church. Abiding in him is putting to practice the doctrine, the principle of God. Abiding in him is living it seven days a week, not just on Sunday. Abiding in him, and I realize I'm talking to the Wednesday night crowd, and you're the faithful. But abiding in him is much more than just having perfect attendance at church. I told you a few weeks ago, or maybe now a couple of months ago, that one of the fears that I have is somebody sitting on the pews that calls this home that God's placed me in charge of to speak and to watch out for your souls and you be comfortable enough to die and go to hell. It scares me. In fact, it's a serious, such a serious matter that I have spent, I've spent time and continue to spend time asking God, God, what can I do? I, I love to reach for the new ones. I, I love reaching for the lost. I love reaching into the world of the hurt and the hopeless and offer them hope. But I believe without a doubt, if we're not growing in Christ, we're dying. Amen. And I realize probably on Wednesday night we're not going to have a lot of people that are not believers. But I, and I'm telling you this. I want you to grow in God. The last thing I want to know is that one of you sitting here tonight missed heaven. Amen. Didn't make it. You come, you had a form of godliness, but you denied. Folks, it's real. It's real. And it's serious business. Very serious. When you think about eternity, we think of a long time as maybe being 92. But 92 is just a dot compared to eternity. Amen. I used to think that 40 was old. I remember when my daddy turned 40, I thought he was old. Now that I'm 42, 40 is not old. In fact, it's just a spring chicken. But your perception changes. And I can tell you one thing. Whatever you have to do to be right will be worth it for eternity's sake. Amen. And whatever you have to surrender in this life to abide in Him will be worth it to stay in the boat. He said, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. And I, I want to ask you tonight, 
you well, the, well, let me before I ask you the question, let me pose to you what the Bible says. You shall know the tree by the fruit that it bears. Now let me ask you the question. What kind of fruit do you have? Amen. The branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. They are burned. Ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. I want us, to, for just a little bit, I want us to look and realize that there's nothing I can do without God. I am not a man on my own. I'm going to serve one or two masters. I'm going to serve God or I'm going to serve Satan. I'm not a man of my own. You're not either. I don't care how much of a person you are. You're a servant either to sin or to God. And he's given us instructions of here tonight of how we are to abide. I, I realize also that I, you know and I know as, as we are part of the branches of God, he's the true vine. He's our resource of strength. He's our resource of Nutrients. He's our resource of, of direction. He's the one that we are to be grafted into and rooted into and, and we are to look to him for everything that we have. But let me tell you something. When a person thinks they got it all on their own, they've got major problems. I'll, let me say this and, and, and then I'm going to move further. God don't need you, but you sure do need God. Amen. God don't need you. He loves you and He wants you. He desires to have a relationship with you. But God don't need you, but you definitely need God. God can give anything that you've got to anybody else. Amen. God can replace you with anybody. I'm speaking to me too, folks. I'm not just pointing my finger at you tonight. I'm talking to me too. But we need God. And for us to show our need to be in Him, we've got to abide in Him. And we've got to let God be God. It's not me calling the shots. It's not you calling the shots. It's God calling the shots. Letting God be God. The body is one. 1 Corinthians 12 and 12 says, the body is one. And half many members. Thank God we're not all the same branch. I'm going to be honest with you tonight. I love you to death, but I'm glad you go to your house. Amen. I'm glad you have your own personality. I'm really glad you're all not like me. I am. I'm glad you have your own, own ministries, your own purposes, your own calling. I'm glad of that. We're, one, we're still in the same vine. There's one body, but there's many members. Many members, he tells us. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, and so also, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit, we are all, we are, we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. There's several of us, several different parts, but we're still part of him. And when one of us thinks, and I, I, I'm going to change in just a second, but when one of us gets feeling like we're more important than the other, let me tell you, the hand don't speak to the foot. It all comes from the head. He's the head. Amen. There's no, there's no big eyes and little U's in this. We're all one body. Or we're all one uh, part of that body of Jesus Christ. And He is God. So don't get to, don't, don't ever think that 
The church can't survive without you, but you ought to believe every day that you can't survive without the church. You should be reminded every day that you can't make it without him. Amen. Now, I go back and I'm starting back with verse four, abide in me. I'm gonna ask this simple question. How do I abide in him? How do I abide in him? Well, that's a great question to ask. Uh, John chapter eight, verse 31 said, Jesus uh, said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How am I going to abide in him? Well, it's definitely not going to come without his word. You cannot be a disciple of Christ and not have the word of God alive and well. Part of discipling, part of us as, as believers, as uh uh, Holy Ghost filled spirit filled people one of the things about us to grow should, will only come through studying the word of God that's the reason it's necessary to have these Bible studies it's the reason it's necessary for you to have your daily Bible reading it's the reason it's necessary and again I, I say this we hear it regularly we hear it regularly but we should feel convicted when we have a day that we hadn't read. Amen. Some of us, some of you sitting here should say, oh, me right there. But there should be a conviction upon us if we went one day without the word because that word's what makes us free. That word is what cleanses us. That word's what changes us. Remember, I already mentioned about the word being a lamp to our feet and a light into our path. But let me tell you what he all, David also said. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That word is important to us. If it's going to lead me and guide me, I need to keep my face in it. I need to hear it. If it's going to be the word that is keeping me clean, then I, I need, you, you can't stay clean if you don't take a bath, can you? I'll just be honest with you. If you hadn't took a bath since Sunday, just wave at me from a distance. Don't come shake my hand. Amen. If you have if you haven't been in the word, you're going to start smelling like the world. Amen. You're going to start resembling the world. The filth of the world will creep into your life because it's the word that cleanses us. It's the word that keeps us. If you don't if you're having trouble sin with sin, guess what? Get in the word. Get in the word. One of the things that it does, it builds a respect of you or uh, for you of God. Amen. When you begin to study the word, it will build a newer, greater respect of God in your life. I promise that works. Try it. It'll, you'll find it so. Also, it'll give you, uh, again, not, not a, a fear of, of, of being afraid, but a reverence, a fear of God once you study that word. Once you realize that that word, and this is one of the things that I, I do, I love it, I'm, I'm you know, but I, I live right there. You know, when I'm reading the Bible and, and they're talking about uh, these things happening, you know, I could almost, when jail drove that night, a nail through that man's head, I could almost picture myself coming by and looking and saying, wow, look at that. No, I wasn't there, but I can put myself there when I'm reading the Word. Amen. Because it becomes real to us. It becomes real to us. It's important to be a part of the Word. So how do I abide in Him? First, you're going to have to be in the Word. You're going to have to uh, continue in His Word. As John said, Colossians chapter 1 said it like this in verse 23. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven so in other words if you can get grounded and settled don't be a fly by night person don't be one that we don't know whether you're going to be expected at church or not amen 
Folks, that's the truth. When you get grounded and settled, then you can grow in him. And you can abide in him. But when, you, when you're wishy-washy, I'm going to tell you the winds of doctrine will come and sweep you right off of your feet. The winds of doctrine will come. You'll hear things and you'll wonder, but when you get rooted and grounded in something, then you're stable. Amen. I go on to Colossians chapter 2. He says, Ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Notice, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. Hear me. You don't need to just say, well, I'm a Pentecostal. Why are you a Pentecostal? Well, I believe like they do. Well, what do they believe? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm. You need to be established in this. Amen. Scripture tells us there's one Lord, one faith, and one doctrine. Okay? And if you don't know it, you probably ought to learn it. It would be in your best interest. Say, hey, I'm, I'm ready. And again, get out the Bible. Read it. Study it. Let God open it up. It comes by revelation. And God will reveal it. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, ye shall be filled. God will reveal it. God will open it up to you. God will let you see it. And if, you, if you're having trouble, you know what? Go ahead and say, hey, it's not, it's not, uh, it shouldn't be above any of us to ask questions or even say, can I do a Bible study? Have you got a Bible study? I, I can't promise you that I'll teach you a Bible study, but I'll get somebody teaching you a Bible study. Because we've got to get established in this. It's necessary to be rooted in this. The Word of God is what's going to get you to heaven. Amen. He went on to say in verse 8, Paul was writing this. He said, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. I, I want to stop. I want to I finish this, but let me just go back. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. I, I want you to understand. I have probably more commentaries on my computer than you have ever seen. I don't need commentaries to tell me how to live. I need the Word of God. I, I, I don't, I'm not preaching against commentaries because I said I've got them. And I even look at them sometimes. But I don't look at them and then expect the Bible to follow up. I look and see if they follow up with what the Bible says. Because I don't need man's philosophy. I don't need man's philosophy. I, I don't need his vain deceit because you know what? So many of these people has got a motive behind their, behind their uh, ex explanations. Amen. I don't need none of that. I need the holy word of God. And then he went on to say, after the tradition of men. Uh, again, do you, you realize that traditions have changed. But God hadn't. Traditions have changed. We, we, we are very uh, much in a different traditional world than what we were in the Bible days. But he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So just because it may not be in style for 2018, it didn't change the word of God. You want to know how to abide in him, I'm telling you. Don't follow the traditions of men. Because they're going to change. I mean, they're going to change. They're, in fact, they're going to have a new fad probably within the next few days. And if you follow off after all these fads and these traditions, you'll find yourself wandering around and just without knowing anything. Never able to acquire satisfaction. But if you'll get rooted and grounded in the Word, it'll, it'll be there. It's forever settled. His Word's forever settled in the heavens. He went on to say, after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. For in him, in him, in him, everybody say in him. 
dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's all in Jesus, folks. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So how do I abide in him? I'm going to get in his word. I'm going to stay in his word. And I'm going to walk in his word. And I'm going to get rooted and grounded in his word. Verse 5, I go back to John chapter 15. It says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. My next question I would like to ask tonight is, what fruit do I bear? What fruit do I bear? Well, Paul asked the question in Romans chapter 6. He said, what fruit had ye then? And those things whereof ye are now ashamed. Now, every one of us has had a fruit that we were ashamed of. Every one of us has done things that we wish we hadn't done. Every one of us has bore the fruit of our own uh, desires and our own lust and our own fleshly beings. But he went on to say, for the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. <laughs> Be ye holy. Fruit unto holiness. I, again, I say this. I, I believe holiness requires modesty in our dress. But I believe holiness covers our heart much more than it covers our dress. You got it on the inside, it'll, it'll manifest itself on the outside. Amen. You get holy with God on the inside, you don't have to worry about the outside whether it'll be holy or not because it'll be holy. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Paul was writing to the church at Galatia and he said the fruit, you know, what did I read to us in John chapter 5, verse, uh, I mean John chapter 15, verse 5? He said... He that abideth me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. Bringeth forth much fruit. Well, he said the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no. You abide in him. Amen. He abides in you. You'll bear forth much fruit. And that fruit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no. If we live in the Spirit, Paul was writing just a couple of verses down in verse 25, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. So if we're going to be in Him, this is the fruit that we'll bear. Again, I go back to what I've already quoted. You shall know the tree by the fruit that it bears. What kind of fruit are you bearing? If you're not bearing love, you're probably not in him. If you're not bearing joy, you're probably not in him. If you don't have the peace, you probably are not in him. Long-suffering or gentleness or goodness, meekness or temperance. If you're not bearing that, you're probably not. I quickly, I'm not done, but I'm going to move further. In that same verse, he said, for without me ye can do. I preached Sunday night. Some of you will remember. Many of you won't. But I preached Sunday night. Is there anything too hard for you? And there's not. We answered that question. There's nothing too hard. However, in my own being, I'm nothing. Being Josh is about as useless as a, as a snail. Got any use for snails? Some people eat them. Most people don't. There's really, what, what do those, you know those old slugs? Y'all know those old slugs that crawl around certain times of the year? What good are they? I've wondered why in the world God allowed the mosquito to escape the flood or the tick, you know, the chigger. 
But without God, I'm useless, more useless than they are. Amen? Without God, I am nothing. When I can grasp that every ounce of my ability, every bit of my strength, every bit of my talent that I don't have, but everything that I possibly could have is all because of him. Everything that I ever hoped to be is all because. When I can realize that I am nothing without God, then it's not hard for me to let God really be God. But when I think I know something, I can just take heed because I'm about to fall. Amen. When I think I've got it figured out, I can get braced because God's vision show me I have it. When I think I've got this all under my control, I can rest assured that God's going to step in and let me know he's still in control. Amen. For I can do nothing. Verse 5 says, Ye Without me, you can do nothing. Remember, he was telling his disciples this right before he was crucified. They didn't understand that he was about to be carried away and put into a tomb. They didn't understand that he was going to hang on a cross and die the horrible death, the embarrassing death of someone hanging on a cross. But he was warning them, hey, I'm coming back, and when I come back, you need to have one thing in mind you're not going to be able to stand without me. This was proved to them. This was proved to them when he went, actually before he went to Calvary, it was proved to them when Judas betrayed him. In fact, probably during the time that he was given this lecture or this parable to them, Judas was out betraying him probably right about that time. And then shortly thereafter, we realized that when they took Jesus, his disciples fled and went the other direction. Peter reverted back to his old ways. And it become a reality that without me, he can do nothing. I have seen people fall on their face, make such mistakes, I experienced myself wishing that I could retrace my steps, turn around and surrender myself. But I have come tonight to tell somebody in this room that if you'll let God be God, you won't ever. But if you try it on your own, you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't live a clean enough life for him to say well done without him. Can I go ahead and go further? The only way you're going to live a clean enough life to hear him say well done is to be filled, yes, and I said filled, with the Holy Ghost because that is the power of God. The only way you're going to make it to heaven, the only way you're going to live above sin is to walk in him, abide in him. For without him, without him you can do nothing and I close, I close with this one verse, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I know without him I can do nothing, but I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Would you stand with me? No, without him I can't, but with him I can. Without him I'm going to fall, but with him I can stand. Without him I may make a blunder, but with him I can conquer. Amen. I can do all things. And the good things is, he wants you to abide in him. This is easy if we just live and live abiding in him, we can make it. Can we pray? Lord, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your spirit that we have felt here. Thank you for your visitation. I ask God that you help us to take this word, hide it in our hearts, apply it to our lives. God, help us to walk in you. Help us to reflect your love, your power. Help us to bear your fruit, Lord, the fruit of the spirit. Help us, Lord, to do everything that we can in you. Lord, abide in you, for you are our vine. You are our source and our resource, God, that we need to look to. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. Comfort the family, Lord, of Sister Bragg tonight. 
Keep your hand upon us as we go our way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.